Hello, everybody. So my name is Andreas Mück from SPH, Sustainable Process Heats. Um, I'm, let's say, a simple mechanical engineer um, working nearly 25 years in the automotive industry. Um, and they are 100% on um, combustion engines. So <clears throat> means in my first life, I've uh, done just uh, piston machines from all kinds of aspects. Um, so the de design development, testing, um, also manufacturing. Then I've been working a couple of years for a company called Viking Heat Engines, um, which was one of the pioneers of high temperature heat pumps. Unfortunately, Viking Heat Engines did not survive um, because they've put too much effort into organic Rankine cycles. Um, but we have also been producing um, already a couple of years ago um, high temperature heat pumps um, and one of these Heat pumps is still running, as as far as we know, um, in Switzerland. Uh, so has now 30,000 hours of runtime. But this was a very small unit. Um, yeah, and after the breakdown of um, Viking, um, Tim and myself, so one of my colleagues and, and me, we decided um, to start new. Um, so we have been employed at Viking Heat Engines and now we have opened our own company um, and doing the same thing in an industrial size. So before we had a 200 kilowatt heat pump, but we think that this is not enough for the industry. Maybe the content of the presentation first, a couple of um, information about the company itself, um, then about our product and um, at the end, um, also, um, similar to the colleague from Spilling, um, some, some project examples. Um, so, as I said, we are a very young company, so founded in 2020, but we have a little bit more experience on high temperature heat pumps. In 2021, we got a big investor in the company and then this was the um, time then to to go from just uh, paper design into hardware and um, <clears throat> this is what we did then during the last year and then uh, yeah um, in in q1 this year um, it's planned to install the first unit into the industry um, I will come later to this. Um, so we are sitting um, next to Cologne in, in Overath. Uh, it's 20 kilometers east from Cologne. Um, and uh, I said we are a young company and then therefore we are concentrating on what we are or what we think we are good in. Um, so this is the uh, development and assembly of the uh, compressors. Um, the system development, um, the control development, and the uh, integration at the customer side. Um, and all the rest we are doing with uh, competent partners. So the main parts from the uh, compressor will come uh, from companies which are usually working for the automotive industry. The, let's say, um, the reed valves or the, the yeah, which also the, the um, compressor valves are coming from the, the market leader in this field um, and so on. So, um, and the heat pump itself is built by a company close by, um, which is usually doing heat pumps on lower temperatures and, and, and uh, cooling machines. Um, so they are, they are educated in, in handling the pressure directives, the fluids, and so on. So now to, to the um, heat pump, so we call it therm booster. Um, so the area which we feel comfortable is, let's say, um, on the heat sink sites um, above 90 degrees. Um, up to currently 160, 165, depending on if we are using steam or hot water. So this topic here is steam. So 160 degrees with, uh, yeah, when we produce direct steam. Um, and on the heat source side, um, we 
could go lower, but usually we, we get uh, <clears throat> temperatures um, from 50 degrees or above. <clears throat> In future, we could also go higher. Um, so we have started, we had this initial discussion about refrigerants. We have started with HFOs, um, but we can also handle natural refrigerants like butane or pentane, um, and this is what we will do. Um, in, in some of the projects. Um, if it really makes sense to go with um, a heat pump to these temperatures of 200 degrees um, or above um, is something which also we doubt, even if we uh, have a machine which could do this. Um, so there a combination as uh, Frederick um, has already shown um, and also spilling has shown the combination with vapor recompression um, seems to be the way to go also for us. Um, if we talk about the firm booster, we, we uh, talk about, let's say, something like a building kit. Yeah, it's, it's I guess, a bit similar to what um, spilling is doing. So we have our compressor, which will always be the same compressor. Um, at least at the moment, and then we combine these compressor or two or three or more compressors um, with then um, some some heat exchangers, and then we can choose depending on the um, customer demand which kind of um, heat exchanger we use. For example, if we want to produce direct steam, then we use uh, a plate and shell heat exchanger. Um, if we produce hot water, then we um, take uh, standard plate heat exchangers. Um, but if there are special demands from the customer side, we can also go to um, uh, tube and shell or whatever um, um, heat exchanger is, is um, requested by the customer. So means we are trying to, to have something like a building kit uh, where we choose depending on the customer request which parts we put together. So in order to um, maybe come to um, a couple of examples, um, so our first unit will um, be installed in the food industry, uh, so installation January is maybe um, is gone. So, but still, the, the uh, we we plan to to install it um, this month. Um, so, we this is a single um, compressor machine. Um, the heat source uh, in this case is water. We we have this water um, or the water we are using is the cooling water. From a CHP unit um, means yeah we are cooling the, the CHP engine um, and, and and use this water and uh, we deliver um, saturated steam at at two bars. Um, this uh, steam will be fed into the existing steam network of of this company <clears throat> and um, the yearly production um, in this company will be 4.1 gigawatt um, thermal um, per year. So the CO2 emission reduction um, will be 550 tons um, yeah, calculated with the gas going into the um, CHP, which um, yeah, delivers the electricity for the heat pump. The next example, <clears throat> oh no, sorry, um, and yeah, this is a picture of the unit. Um, so you see, it's it's uh, on a frame. Um, it's approximately five and a half meter um, long and then two and a, less than two and a half meter wide, um, and also a bit more than two meter high. Um, so that it's easy to transport um, and, and then it's more or less a plug and play solution means you connect the um, <clears throat> heat sink and source and um, the electric connections um, and the control system and then 
you're ready to go. Okay. The next project um, is a project which we will install um, in the Netherlands. Um, we, um, yeah, it's for the a company called UBQ. UBQ um, is producing thermoplastics from waste, and um, yeah, they are building a plant without any fossil fuels. Um, they have, let's say, a low temperature cycle um, where, where they produce uh, temperatures <clears throat> yeah, up to 80 degrees or so. And, and um, then for all their high temperature demands, our units are installed. We will install two of these systems. Um, the entire high temperature heat demands uh, of UBQ is 1.5 megawatts. Um, and uh, we have a runtime of, of 6,200 hours um, at this site. Um, <clears throat> means we, we will generate um, 10.8 gigawatt hours um, of heat per year. Um, so it means we can avoid 1.25 million cubic meter of natural gas. Um, by using green electricity, which is the aim from UBQ, um, we, we have a CO2 um, avoidance of 2,400 tons per year. Um, here you see the <clears throat> A PID of of this um, of units. Um, so we have with two of these units. Um, you can see um, here the two compressors, and uh, so they are working more or less completely independent from e from each other. Um, and as I said, we are uh, we are delivering two units. Each of these units can deliver. Um, approximately one megawatt. So means in total we install two megawatts of capacity. Um, and uh, on, on the slide before I, I shown that uh, they need 1.5 megawatts. So this is one of the ways how we can build in redundancy here. Um, means even if we, um, if, if one compressor fails or we need to service one compressor, um, the rest of the compressors can continue to run. Um, because the <clears throat> refrigerant circuits are separated from each other. On the heat source side, um, uh, nevertheless, we, we um, go first through the first um, evaporator and then through the second evaporator. This uh, reduces the temperature lift from the first um, <clears throat> uh, refrigerant circuit um, and therefore increase the efficiency slightly. <clears throat> so here we um, get water at 75 degrees um, and cool it to 65 degrees. Um, we even if it is a um, steam um, webinar here, um, here we are producing um, pressurized hot water um, at, at uh, 130 degrees, um, but we could with the same layout also do a steam. So therefore it's, it's uh, I think still a valid um, example <clears throat> for this webinar. So the COP of this unit is, is in the range of 4.4. Um, and yeah, maybe also here um, a couple of pictures um, of, of this unit. So you see um, it's a similar, nearly identical frame, um, but here we have two um, compressors on one frame. Um, and uh, you see that the um, steam producing heat exchanger is missing. Therefore, we have a couple of um, late heat exchangers in order to make hot water. The third example, um, which we will do, um, but this will come later this year, um, 
so it, it was planned to have it uh, installed this year, but uh, you know to to apply for um, incentives uh, from the government can take time. And um, so our um, customer here still um, is waiting um, for, for the OK um, to receive the money. Um, so the subsidies for this project. Um, so we also then need to wait. Um, so here again, it's in cooperation with, with uh, 2G. Um, so again, the CHP delivers the hot water. Here the temperature. Um, the input temperature is a little bit higher, so we <clears throat> have a heat source of 92 to 72 degrees C, um, and we are producing really low pressure steam at 1.5 bars, which is used in this very large industrial bakery. Um, therefore, here the um, COP is quite high um, with 5.5. With and maybe to not extend the time. Um, the last example which I would like to, to show this is um, in Austria. It's a it's, uh, governmental subsidized project um, which is called AHEAD, which we do together with the Austrian Institute of Technology. Um, and the end customer um, is Takeda. Um, and then uh, here it's very similar to um, <clears throat> what what uh, Spilling has, has shown before. So um, here it's really cascaded. So from a Schiller, the water is, is taken to, to go into a, let's say, low temperature heat pump. It's also an ammonia heat pump in this case. Um, then we will do the phase change um, with our heat pump, so we will deliver um, three bar absolute into um, a mechanical vapor recompression unit, uh, which then delivers 11 bar of steam. Yeah, so this uh, project is, is also published and, and uh, you can read about it um, at AIT or NEFI um, in Austria. So yeah, that's my presentation.